Good morning, beloved. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the final overhaul. We are on the countdown, and we are just journeying through character assaults this week, and it has been so good. And this morning, I have the honor, the privilege, the blessing to present my bishop, my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Ronald Thornhill, and he is going to teach us this word, I promise y'all. Listening to the word from him is simply like having a conversation that encourages you, can get your whole life together, can get you back on track, can get you focused, and make sure that you're fueled for the journey. So grab your ink pen, your notebook, your device, and take some good notes because God is about to bless us in a phenomenal way. Bishop, let the Lord use you. The line is yours to the glory of God. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning to everybody, and especially you, um, YP. It's just an honor and a privilege and certainly my pleasure uh, to be able to join you again on this blessed morning. And, and let me just state a few things uh, from the outset with regards to this overhaul and particularly the final overhaul, the final countdown, rather. You know, it's amazing how we come to the close of things. There are a lot of people that can start. There are those that, that find a way of kind of getting through. But there are a few people that we can call that are finishers or closers. A closer, as you know, even in basketball, they call them in the last inning and use them when they're trying to get the final out. And what determines the success of that closer is not how fast or how hard he throws the ball or she throws the ball. It's whether or not they can get that final out. And, and so what I want to say initially, uh, Pastor Jess, and to those of you who've been faithful over this uh, entire year, even with COVID, and I call it the COVID countdown, uh, even with regards to um, the vaccinations that's uh, been given out, yet ultimately it's how we finish uh, that really determines our success. And so, again, I, I wanted to take a few moments to thank you uh, for not only your prayers, but how you've been standing in the gap on behalf of so many um, as it relates to not just uh, COVID-19, but there are other issues that has arisen uh, as a result of this uh, coronavirus, as well as the social and emotional wellness of all of us. So, again, I'm grateful, I'm thankful, and I wanted to just state that from the outset to commend you for your faithfulness and to commend you for your commitment as well as how you've um, encouraged many of us that, uh, that stayed asleep while you were working uh, early in the morning, working through prayer. So there, there is a word as it relates to character assault. And, and while we've all been assaulted, uh, there is always the consummate or um, – uh, the person that uh, sets us up as the ultimate example. And uh, my assignment uh, was Jesus. Uh, and uh, I thought that was rather not necessarily ironic, but, but when it comes to the pastors and, and how we are assaulted on so many levels and at so many times, and, and this is not to slight or say that you don't, you know, as um, parishioners as well as uh, individuals that we don't go through, but sometimes uh, we catch it on another level. But nevertheless, there is always uh, a prescription for what we are dealing with. There's always medicine or uh, a sense of medication to help us through the process and help us to be able to deal with it. And so I want to, before we begin the prayer, I want to take you to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. And, and this is... Um, <clears throat> always a, a message or it is always a scripture that that kind of ends up being the prelude uh, to the or the precursor to what Jesus encountered, but it gives us um, his uh, resume in terms of what he would encounter. And so in that first verse, and then we're going to drop down to the seventh through the ninth verses, and um, I think you probably are familiar with it, but I want to read this out of the Message Bible. This morning, that's Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, verse 1, and then we're going to look at verses 7 through 9. And it says, who believes what we've heard and seen? 
And I know that speaks a lot, you know, when you talk about assaults and you talk about what folk have said. Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? And what this is, it's framing what Jesus would encounter. But sometimes, even with how well we frame something, we'd never think people would say and sometimes do what they do when it comes to, you know, what we're trying to accomplish. And then now we drop down to the seventh through the ninth verse, and it really gives us um, actually what takes place. He was beaten. He was tortured. But he didn't say a word like a lamb taken to be uh, taken to the slaughter and like a sheep being sheared. He took it all in silence. Justice miscarried, and he was led off. And did anyone really know what was happening? And let me just put a pause there. Sometimes when you are assaulted, sometimes when people try to assassinate your character, uh, and there are those bystanders that don't always know what's going on, but you've got to understand what took place as a whole. And so it goes on to say he died without a thought for his own welfare, beaten, bloody for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked, threw him in a grave with a rich man, even though he'd never heard a soul or said one word that wasn't true. And we close with verse 10. Still, it was God. It was what God had in mind all along, to crush him, even when it comes to his character. And the pain was still a part of the process. The plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin so that he'd see life come from it, life and more life, and God's plan would deeply prosper through him. What a word we are in the closing, but yet this was the beginning and the framing of what would take place with Jesus. Now, let me kind of cut across the field and give you several things as relates to uh, this particular, this is almost the gospel uh, in the, uh, the Old Testament. But two things stand out here relative to, to Jesus and uh, the assault as well as the things that he would encounter. It's his reputation and his character. And most of us know our reputation is who people think we are, and our character is who we really are. And when it comes to our character, you know, it speaks to our moral uh, quality, that, that moral integrity, uh, and it also speaks to what you do when folks are not watching. Now, let me back up. The reputation is who people think we are. That's what's out there. But the character is who we really are. And so when, when it comes to assault, because this is real talk, it's real life that matters, and it's real things that take place. And, and assaults sometimes are uh, assassinations to our character. It's annihilation of our person, and it's aggravation, you know, on another level. But as we deal with these assaults, I want you to think about three things or think with three things in mind relative, how, relative to how we handle the assault. I want you to think about how do we model the message, how do we manage the madness, and how do we maximize the moment. I think these are three key ingredients as we deal with assault. Because if you don't know your value, if you lose your voice, and if you don't recognize the vision and the process of what God's doing, we end up being just like everybody else. Now, Jesus could have clearly, when they came at him, and on several occasions, uh, when they called him names, they even called him Beelzebub, you know, as it relates to the devil, another term for the devil. And, and there are those who would call us names when it comes to uh, the assassination of our character. That's when someone's trying to assassinate you, they're trying to secretly destroy who you are. And a lot of times they do this by dropping seeds. 
You know, when you're looking for a sniper, they, they try to pick you off. But people try to take you out by dropping a seed. They drop it and keep on moving, hoping that it will grow when somebody else watered it. And it goes somewhere like this. Child, have you heard? No, I haven't. Tell me more. The seed's been dropped, and then somebody else comes along to water it. But the difference between assassination and annihilation is that assassination of your character is when they secretly try to destroy you. But when someone is trying to annihilate your character, it's to openly destroy you, speaking negatively. Don't care who's around, what's said, how it's said, where it's said, and even in the company of who said it. So these are things that we must recognize initially. If we're going to model the message, we've got to recognize um, the management. We've got to recognize how people come at us so that we can be able to manage the madness. So one of the last pieces to assassination and annihilation is then the aggravation that comes with the assassination. And while assassination is secretly trying to destroy Annihilation is trying to openly destroy. The ag aggravation is when someone is chipping away, gradually trying to destroy. That's when they take pot shots at you. And, and, and you've got to watch these people that say, oh, I'm just joking. Or, oh, I'm just, you know. But, but, you know, joking has a way of speaking a lot of times truth. And so what's in a person, it's going to come out. Sooner or later, you can say through joking, you can be influenced by some other avenues. But nevertheless, it's how we model the message when we're being assassinated. And I'm going to get to the actual modeling, but in addition to modeling the message, how do we manage the madness? Because when you look at what people say and do, we use the word, we get angry and upset, and we often say we get mad. The hope is that you don't go, go into a madness rage, uh, uh, because when sometimes people come at you uh, the wrong time, on the wrong day, and when you're really not trying to hear it, uh, you sometimes don't manage the matters. You end up with flip out, or you're flipping the script, and you don't realize the after the fact, and then you got to go back and apologize or something. Just don't come at me on early Monday morning. Uh, try me on Friday. You may get the right piece out of me on hump day. But if you come at me early Monday morning with some nonsense, I've then got to learn how to manage my madness because before I realize, I may have went in all the way in. And you say, no, that can't be the pastor. Yeah, it was the pastor. You caught him on the wrong day at the wrong time and in the wrong frame of mind. So we got to manage that, uh, Saints, because if we don't manage it, that one situation can ruin our witness. And we got to go back to Jesus. Jesus recognized what his assignment was. And so when you don't recognize your assignment, you get caught up in the madness. And when you're caught up in the madness, you lose your witness just for that moment. And so if you go back to the 10th verse, it's still, it's, it's what God had in mind. Now, now, some assaults, while God might not have orchestrated it, he will teach you how to navigate through it. But if you don't recognize that the Lord has positioned you for something greater, and, and you can never experience forgiveness if you have never been through, you know, assaults, if you've never been through attacks, if you've never been through assassination attempts, you've never been through annihilation attempts, you know, you can't really appreciate the forgiveness piece if you don't sometimes lose it. On occasion, and this is not a license for you to lose it. Please don't miss my message this morning. It's not a license for you to lose it or miss it. But if grace happens to step in and you caught me on that Monday morning where I wasn't feeling, I didn't have my neutral burst, I didn't take my NRG, and I didn't take uh, what was necessary, you caught me just dry and not uh, juiced up you may get the other side to me. Don't fool yourself. Every, every person, every last one of us, uh, we have a pre-Christian uh, pre experience. We've got a, a process experience. Then there's a post. And sometimes we revert back to that pre-Christian experience and before you know it, you don't went in. So anyway, let's go back to um, what I was sharing. After we model the message, 
we then got to learn the art of managing the madness. Sometimes things will happen, and the, the assaults are going to come. But the last thing that I want you to catch this morning is how do I maximize the moment? How do I not miss what God is trying to do through me and with me and for someone else simply because I've been aggravated because they're chipping away by taking pot shots at me. And one of the worst kinds of assaults is when people jump on the bandwagon. And when we get a whiff of it, we find out that it's not necessarily what was said, but it was how it was said. But Jesus is our ultimate example. There's a scripture that says, as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise. <laughs> That's a lot in just a few words. As Christ has suffered, as he has suffered the attack, as he has suffered the assault, as he has suffered the aggravations and the assassinations and the annihilation, how do we arm ourselves? We arm ourselves through the word. We arm ourselves through the Holy Spirit and with the Holy Spirit. We arm ourselves by looking at the message or to model, or we look at how we model what Jesus did. And so as we close, I want to highlight three additional things. <clears throat> In dealing with assassinations, annihilations, and aggravations relative to assault, an assault is simply an attempt to sometimes take you out. And sometimes, you know, we get arrested for assault in the spiritual sense. You know, you have verbal assaults, they are physical assaults, they are all kinds of assaults to our character. But it's not just the assault that we've got to home in on. It's how we respond. You know, and it's always easier said than done. There are those that can give you the classic textbook answer. But textbook sometimes is what you can't reach when somebody go in on you, calling you something, saying you did this and you know you didn't do that. Or you went this place and they they call it a mistaken identity, but it's after you handcuffed me. It's after you said everything you said. And one of the worst things about um, the assassination of my character, when it gets out there, nobody goes back to try to repair the damage. You know, there is not any <clears throat> social media. You can try to go back out there and post, but I don't see a lot of posts that says. Hey, look, long post alert, what you thought or what they said about Thornhill really wasn't true. Uh, that was a lie. I've never seen many, if any, uh, posts on social media or Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, that say, hey, look, I, I misquoted. I got it all wrong. No, you got to feel your way back through it. You got to deal with it. Time has got to run its course before we can get back what we lost. So if we can't repair in the general sense, how do we manage it? How do we model what Christ did? And how then do we maximize the moment? Because sometimes all it takes is a moment for us to lose it. And here's what I want to leave with you. You've got to know your value. You can't lose your voice. And you got to stay focused on the vision. Jesus knew his value. He knew who he was. He did not suffer with identity crisis. Can I tell you something this morning? You don't need anybody outside of your circle to try to not only qualify who you are, but to try to placate or try to define or try to affirm who you are. The Bible says, oh, I feel my preach coming on, but I've got to bring it back down. Bring it down, Thorn Hill. Um, Jesus, he gives us an example, and it talks about how he laid the foundation and not just how he, you know, walked through the process, but he gives us the tools necessary for us to get through our situation. 
And when you know your value, the Bible said, if any man or woman be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. So, so while you may be going through a crisis, as they have attempted to assault your character, don't lose your value. You've got more worth. All it takes is one moment for you to come down. And this is Nehemiah. When he was on the wall working, and near in Sanballat and Tobias, tried to get him to come down to the valley to deal with that mess. Always recognize the Sanballat and Tobias. Is, they are always, and don't take this the wrong way, they are always below or beneath you. The text says, Nehemiah was on the wall, and he wouldn't come down to deal with the nonsense. Assault to your character always has to, it always deals with you on a lower level, trying to get you to come down to acquiesce or to address the situation. Sometimes the way you address it is through silence. You don't address it. You don't deal with it at all. You know, you can't misinterpret. Silent. Oh, that's a good word. Sometimes, you know, people can say, well, he said this. No, you can't misinterpret my silence. I didn't say nothing. And that's because I know my value. And when you know your value, you won't allow people to take you there. Secondly, don't lose your voice. And a lot of times, people lose their voice because they start hollering and dealing with stuff that they don't need to do. Stop hollering. You know what I'm saying is, can I holler at you for a second? No, no, I don't need you to holler at me. Keep your voice. The Bible talks about giving power to the faint. To them that have no might, he increases their strength. Even when the youth should faint and the young people, sometimes they may utterly fall. But the text says, they that wait upon the Lord, when you wait, oh, their time is coming. You don't have to get no get back on them. Let them keep running their mouth. They're going to run up on the wrong person with the wrong thing. And you did not say a word, but you kept your voice. And then finally, it is the vision. That's your focal point. That's, your, that's the, the, the lenses that you see out of. Everybody don't see out the same lenses. And so when you don't come back with some get back when they attack you or assault your character, that's because you're zoomed in to God. And when you're zoomed in to God, your focus is right. I'm not focused on what you said. I'm focused on not responding to what you said because your resp my response is much more than what your attack is trying to do. And at the end of the day, your assassination, your annihilation, and even your aggravation won't bring me down to the valley to deal with your nonsense. Because the assault is not about you. It's not about me, but it's about you trying to get to what's inside of me. And I won't let you tear me down. Because what God has in store for me is bigger than you, and it's bigger than what you think I'm made out of. And never forget, your reputation is what and what people or who people think you are, but your character is who you really are. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, as we come to the close of another tremendous session of this prayer overhaul, we are thankful for uh, not just the leadership, but we're grateful for what it has done over these months. And God, what final way to close is to deal with sometimes the assaults that come at us. Teach us how to model the message when our character's been assassinated. Teach us how to manage the madness when even people are trying to annihilate our character. But above all, teach us how to maximize the moment, even when times come and we're aggravated by what folks say. And at the end of the day, Father, we thank you for our value. We praise you for the voice that you've given us to speak when you give us a word. And we thank you for the vision that you've given us to let us know that it's not by might nor by power, 
but it is by your spirit, saith the Lord. We're thankful and we're grateful, and we'll ever be so mindful to give thy name the glory, the honor, as well as the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen again. God bless you. My God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Listen here, y'all, you have gotten your marching orders on how to handle character assault. Listen, don't let them holler at you, and don't you be hollering. Just let God help you. The good bishop has given you the word, amen, the strategies, the tools to overcome character assault. Listen, if that word was a blessing to you, you know, here on the overhaul, we sow where we grow, we seed where we seed, and we tithe to our temple. So if this word has been a blessing to you this morning, it is, if it has helped you to grow, if it fed your spirit, consider sowing a seed. You can sow directly to Bishop at dollar sign menspiration. I'm going to spell that out for you at dollar sign M-E-N-S-P-I-R-A-T-I. O N. So dollar sign menspiration. Or as always, you can send it to dollar sign power up prayer call and in the subject line put Bishop Thornhill or put character assaults or put something that inspired you, what stood out to you from today, and we'll make sure that that seed is sown to him directly. Amen. Listen, y'all, please understand. If God has prophetically given us these words on how to handle character assault, it means that he's preparing you to be able to pass the test when it shows up. So be encouraged. You set under enough word and you have enough oil on your life to be able to overcome any attack that comes your way. Just trust God. Amen. I love you. Your life absolutely matters. Hold on to this final overhaul, amen. God is getting you ready for the next leg of this journey, and you won't be able to make it without him, amen. So get the playback of this word on today. Meditate on what stood out to you, and trust God in the process. Bishop, we thank you so much again for blessing us on this morning, and God bless you, beloved. Go in peace and live on purpose.